much like Venezuela, um, we don't know the full dimensions of this. I have seen people on Twitter cheering the allegedly impending destruction of, of Beirut. Um, but effectively, uh, last last week, I think it was, um, Netanyahu, um, his, uh, his generation's um, Hitler, uh, traveled to the US and got a rock star's welcome with like red carpets and, and gave this hour-long speech in Congress that resulted in 58 separate standing ovations. That's almost like a standing ovation every minute. Is that right? I mean, it was just like, it was like completely, it was completely, um, uh, the, the, the mighty uh, Abby Martin and uh, Lindsay Snell, who, I mean, we're hoping to we're to get Lindsay on the show very soon. Um, she, that, uh, th they did some great work on this, like documenting like how utterly insane and genocidal and, and creepy uh, Netanyahu's rhetoric was, where he was effectively saying, how dare you criticize us when we are fighting your fight overseas for you so you don't have to like shades of the ukrainian saying we're dying so nato doesn't have to yeah. um as if this is you know something very recommendable um it looks like israel is going to war with lebanon um and it looks like netanyahu got the green light to do this um while he visited capitol hill and i might add that yes a very funny excerpt from media reporting on this was that as ever he always does this when he visits the us he and his wife pitched up with suitcases full of dirty laundry to get the white white house to do it for them yeah i saw that <laughs> yeah i mean it's like the the, the 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 this is a guy who likes reinforcing stereotypes quite clearly but if you draw up um robert peston's tweet yeah that's up um yeah yeah okay and zoom in on it please um, yeah, so basically, Robert Peston is a British client journalist, which is, say, like a crony who just writes down whatever uh, he's told uh, by powerful people. On October 8th, so this is about 24 hours after Hamas breached Gaza's uh, open air concentration camp walls um, and plunged deep into Zionist entity territory, Robert Peston took to Twitter or X, and I, I shall read uh, this largely in full. Hamas's attack on Israel has the potential to be as destabilizing to global security as Putin's attack on Ukraine, according to British intelligence sources. They believe Hamas's atrocities were sponsored by Iran. They warn Netanyahu is highly likely to retaliate. There is a risk of this crisis spreading well beyond the Middle East because of Putin's links with Iran, the West's deep concern about Iran's nuclear ambitions and China's power struggle with America. We are in the early stages of a conflict with ramifications for much of the world. How did British intelligence know on October 8th that this was going to result in a wider regional war? When it was like total chaos and Israel hadn't even come up with a response. Yeah. Did they intend to make it into one? Now, well, if you sorry. Go ahead. Go, no, go ahead. Well, I mean, it's been extensively documented that uh, this so-called intelligence failure uh, wasn't wasn't exactly a, as portrayed, and and Israeli intelligence had advanced foreknowledge of this. Uh, we we've put out several videos on that subject yes. uh, through Active Measures. You can check our YouTube page for those. Um, yeah. but I would I, I would ask. I mean, I think that they are they are like they are. They, they, I mean, they're, they're they're serious deep dives, and like I mean, I, I won't I won't rehash it here. I think just just watch the videos because they they they, they stand up now. But but yeah, that like it, it is quite clear that Israel knew this was coming. Whether they are on it, it, whether they underestimated the scale of it um, and how effective it would be um, is an open question. Um, it's you know it is can be simultaneously true that October seventh was allowed to happen and that Israel are. Are, um, uh, complacent racists who massively underestimated their adversaries um, in Hamas. Um, it was quite stunning the the uh, success of Operation Al Aqsa Flood to the extent that Hamas themselves uh, were stunned at how far they got into Israel and they didn't really know what to do because they'd like met their operational objectives. So it was just like, well, I mean, we're in Israel with guns. Where like what like like what you know what's the next step? Um, but yeah, the, I just think that the, the, the but the point is is that if you go down to um, the next um, in, the, in the in the show notes uh, the map um, of uh, evacuation ships, um, it is quite clear based on um, the movement of British naval vessels that Britain is um, uh, positioning refugee evacuation ships 
very, very, very near Lebanon. And they have been warning about a war in Lebanon for a long time. Um, I have reported on the cradle uh, about a completely insane, this is like the end of last year, it got leaked to a local um, publication. There was, a, um, in, in Lebanon, there, there, there was this um, uh, uh, attempt by Britain to secure a quote-unquote memorandum, memorandum of understanding in which uh, which was completely secret, I might add. I mean, it would have been its contents would have been concealed from 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 the British and indeed Lebanese populations. That Britain was seeking unfettered access to Lebanon's ground, air, and sea territory uh, without diplomatic authorization for quote unquote emergency missions. Um, Britain, British, the British Army soldiers would have been permitted to travel in uniform with their weapons visible anywhere in Lebanon while enjoying immunity from arrest or prosecution for committing any crime. Now, this is the kind of agreement that you would think that like no government in the world would sign up to. Um, and uh, it recalls the NATO drafted Rambouillet agreement um, in early 1999, which was, this was a fake uh, peace conference. It was always meant to be a war conference where the US basically confronted Milosevic, uh, the, the then Yugoslav leader, and said, we have this set of proposals and if you, it is non-negotiable and if you don't sign up to it, then we are going to bomb you. Um, and uh, the, the, the Milosevic rejecting them um, uh, was framed as, oh, it's Serb intransigence and, and, and blah, blah. Uh, no, the, the whole point was that they knew it would be rejected and several State Department officials have admitted that we they set the bar, which would have included like, if NATO wanted bridges built in Yugoslavia, the Yugoslav government had to foot the bill. Um, and yes, they would be, uh, it, 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 NATO soldiers on, on Yugoslav territory would be immune from prosecution or arrest for any crime, much like in Lebanon. Um, the, uh, yeah, the, the, him, him rejecting this as, as you know, any, any, any Serb would uh, was regarded as um, uh, a sign that he was just on a war path. Um, we have reason to believe that the Lebanese government would have actually just accepted this because as I have repeatedly exposed for The Cradle, a great independent publication, very worthy of your time, um, really setting the agenda and publishing some extraordinary investigations, um, some of which are written by me, um, that yeah, that basically, th th based on some leaks that, that, that I received, um, it's clear that the, the British intelligence has um, infiltrated Lebanese military security and intelligence agencies at the highest levels. Um, it inserts assets into these uh, agencies at the high, at the highest levels. It um, has its staff posted to their headquarters. Um, uh, the, 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 this is like, you know, like the, the, the Lebanese equivalent of MI5 and MI6 and military intelligence. It's, it's, it's full of British assets and agents. Um, and nobody knows about this. Memorandums of understanding underpinning this infiltration uh, have been mentioned in public, but the details are not known. Um, you have to rely on enterprising investigative journalists like myself uh, to um, uh, 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 to learn this. Um, if you go down to the first Imago um, quote um, and zoom in, if you could. I'm sorry, who's? The, fir the, the first Imago um, uh, link. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, just give yeah, me Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can you can draw it up big so it fills the screen. But like so, what what? Yeah, okay. So so yeah, zoom in on it. Um, yeah, what you're looking at now is um, particularly yeah, yeah 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 yeah. So this is a a table from a leaked document that I reported on, which shows um, like how Britain gets its claws into these agencies. Now at the very top entry, th th this is basically a list of people within Lebanese security and intelligence agencies who either support or oppose British involvement in their operation. The top entry refers to the government commissioner to the military court. Um, it states that he is unsupportive of international engagement, but it also notes he has recently been mired in controversy and his tenure may be coming to an end. Now, was this British engineered? Were they getting rid of someone who stood in their way? Um, it seems quite likely because like he got a, this, this in the individual question, got attacked in local media um, uh, for a variety of scandals, whether they were legitimate or not, we don't know. But um, as if you go to the next link in the in the agenda, Alex, please.
Here we go. Yeah. And zoom in, please. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fantastic. Okay. So this is a lead document related to a British, um, quote unquote, I mean, hilariously, a British, quote unquote, rule of law initiative in the Balkans. And it talks about how um, if local politicians stand in their way, um, it, it, it is necessary to, quote unquote, hold them to account. Um, if their incentives are not aligned with Britain's objectives and values. And it, 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 elsewhere in this document, it states, well, we need to fund a media infrastructure in order to hold these pe these pesky people who don't do our bidding to account. Um, it Presumably, the same dynamic applies to other areas of British interest, of which Lebanon is a very obvious one, um, as, as we've discussed. Now, um, by token of placing vast amounts of British army soldiers with their guns um, in Lebanon, it would have created a situation much like the most of the Balkans, where we are one stray trigger pull away from war. Um, again, um, this it strikes me that this is what the British want to happen, and they're going to get it now, apparently, because um, Netanyahu, despite the, uh, the Israeli occupation force's utter embarrassment in Gaza, um, they're committing a 21st century holocaust, but also getting completely gassed by a bunch of teenagers in knockoff Adidas uh, with AK-47s. Um, yeah, like uh, we're getting that wider regional war that Robert Peston's British intelligence sources warned of on October 8th, 2023. Hey everyone, um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.